Can lab-grown steak be the future of meat? This machine is producing a whole steak using 3D technology. Numerous companies are in a race to develop a meat product without the need to slaughter cows, and this Israeli startup is among them. Beef production is well known to have a significant impact on the environment. Finding a solution has become a lucrative venture. However, the question remains, can lab-grown beef or plant-based substitutes truly solve the issues regarding the beef industry? Let's start on the farm. To maintain a cattle farming operation, a significant amount of land is needed. On average, an area equivalent to the size of El Salvador's tropical rainforests is cleared annually to accommodate these animals. Additionally, these cows emit large amounts of methane, which is a highly potent greenhouse gas. Furthermore, there are emissions resulting from the various stages of beef production, including slaughtering, processing, packaging, and transportation. In 2010, beef production was responsible for approximately 3 billion tons of greenhouse gas emissions globally, which is nearly twice as much as all vehicles in the United States at the time. However, the plant-based meat alternatives industry has grown into a $5.6 billion market. Beyond meat, one of the major players in this industry has expanded its reach to an estimated 135,000 grocery stores and restaurants. Their signature burger uses heating, cooling, and pressure to create a meat-like texture from plant-based proteins. According to a study funded by the company, their product generates approximately 90% less greenhouse gas emissions pound for pound compared to traditional beef. Many scientists aim to achieve the ultimate goal of creating meat instead of merely imitating it. In 2013, professor and scientist Mark Post presented the world's first lab-grown burger and conducted a live tasting in London. However, the cost of producing a single patty was over $325,000. Despite the high cost, funding for lab-grown food began to increase, and several startups began to receive significant investments from high-profile individuals such as Bill Gates and traditional meat companies. A team of researchers in Israel is tackling one of the most significant challenges in the food industry by attempting to grow steaks in a laboratory. Led by Simon Freed, the team is using stem cells to produce a steak that they claim is more ethical, although not entirely vegetarian. Here's how their process works. To create lab-grown meat, scientists first extract stem cells from a cow, which are then grown in a lab. Growing these cells under laboratory conditions is a challenging task. The cells are suspended in a liquid where they divide approximately once a day. The scientists then transfer the cells to the tissue engineering lab, where they produce bio-inks for muscle and fat. The bio-inks are fed through nozzles, and technicians can customize the amount of each that goes into the final product. Maintaining a sterile environment in the printing room is a crucial challenge in this process, as any contamination could cause the cells to die. After leaving the printing room, the lab-grown steak is not yet finished. The cells still require time to develop into muscle and fat tissue, which takes about a month. Once complete, the steak can be treated like regular meat. However, selling lab-grown meat to consumers is still a significant challenge for meat tech companies due to several reasons. Firstly, it contains something called fetal bovine serum, or FBS. It's baby cow blood. One of the most controversial aspects of lab-grown meat is the use of fetal bovine blood, which comes from the fetuses of pregnant cows that were slaughtered. While it is essential for the growth of the cells, it raises ethical concerns. However, meat tech companies are working to find alternatives to a fetal bovine serum that are just as effective. In the meantime, some companies are focusing on developing hybrid products made from plant-based and lab-grown meat, such as a product created by the meat tech company. This hybrid product is made from soy and beef fat grown in their lab, and they consider it to be a more attainable goal while they work to find alternatives to fetal bovine serum. Meat Tech is building a new facility in Belgium to start making foods like these on a larger scale. However, it is not yet clear whether or not a large-scale industry producing lab-grown beef would actually be sustainable. And all of this is riding on something that the vast majority of customers haven't even tried yet. Only in Singapore, where a single company first introduced its lab-grown chicken nuggets in the year 2020, is it currently possible to sell meat that was created in a laboratory. Considering how long this technology has been under development and how little of it we've actually seen, I can't say that I'm completely convinced that this is the best way to mass-produce meat for the general public to consume. Therefore, while we wait for beef to be grown in a lab, consumers who are interested in reducing their carbon footprint can still turn to options that are plant-based. Meanwhile, 
Please let me know what are your thoughts on lab-grown meat. See you in the next video.